Hello and welcome to the December edition of the 60 Minutes Vanity Fair poll. I'm Michael Hogan for Vanity Fair. And I'm Callie Carlin for 60minutes.com. This month we start our look at the American psyche with an American marvel, Mount Rushmore. Now if you could add a fifth president to the South Dakota sculpture, who would you pick? No one we surveyed chose the president who fought for civil rights and through the Vietnam War, Lyndon Johnson. Only a few picked old Hickory, Andrew Jackson, or World War II hero Dwight D. Eisenhower. But the numbers start to increase when you talk about our current president, Barack Obama. 16% would like to see him go granite. Seems a bit early though, kind of like the Nobel Prize. Plus, I'm pretty sure he'd want to be down by Lincoln. 18% would support FDR, 20% would chisel the Gipper Ronald Reagan. But the winner is a president who captured the hearts and minds of a new generation, John F. Kennedy with 29%. If there were a mountain somewhere devoted to today's top conservatives, there's no doubt you'd find the faces of Sarah Palin, Glenn Beck, Sean Hannity, and Rush Limbaugh. But which of these larger-than-life figures is the most influential? Not Hannity, who gets just 8%, nor is it Palin or Cheney, who both clock in at 10%. Beck does a tiny bit better, with 11% of the vote. But the winner is still Rush Limbaugh, according to 26% of the people we polled. Worth noting that the one elected Republican, House Leader John Boehner, came in last. So what do you think, Callie? Would you take the family to visit <laughs> Mount Rush Limbaugh? I'm pretty sure my GOP loyal parents would make a trip out there, but they'd also request that Ann Coulter and Bill O'Reilly be added to that mountain. Now that would be attractive. One of the favorite debates between conservatives and liberals these days is the so-called public option within health care reform. But how many Americans can actually explain what that is? Only a quarter of those we surveyed said they confidently could, while 66% admit nope, they could not. Which tells me there's a bit of a PR problem or communication lapse with the proposed health care plans. Then again, maybe they don't want us to fully understand. The election of Barack Obama seems to have fired up the nation's domestic militias. Are these armed critics of the federal government patriots, as they claim, or dangerous, as their critics complain? A slim minority of those we polled, 11%, say the answer is neither. They're just fringe elements blowing off steam. 33% say they are, quote, a genuine threat to peace and stability. But 36% say the militia members are just exercising their constitutional rights. Meanwhile, some music artists think it's their constitutional right to know if their music was used at painfully high volumes to torture detainees in Guantanamo. What we wanted to know is what music would you consider most torturous if played at high levels. 6% say the Bee Gees. 8% Rage Against the Machine. 9% picked Nine Inch Nails, fittingly. 11% Eminem, which my grandmother would probably agree with. 14% chose ACDC but it is pop queen Britney Spears that tops this chart. 28% of people say they would least like to be a slave to her songs. You know you've arrived when Major League Baseball asks you to throw the opening pitch at the World Series, but not everyone dreams of October glory. We asked Americans which ceremony they'd most like to participate in. Just 4% dream of ringing the opening bell at the Stock Exchange. 7% want to throw that first pitch. 11% picture themselves flipping the coin at the Super Bowl, and 18% imagine lighting the Olympic torch. But a full 50% say they would rather perform a more solemn duty, laying a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Thanks to everyone who took the time to answer the poll questions this month, and all of you for tuning in. We hope you enjoy the holiday season. Although some of you may have to take it upon yourself to spread the cheer around the workplace, since more than a third of those we surveyed say there won't be a company party this year. As far as how many are planning on kissing a coworker, you'll have to head to 60minutes.com to read the full results. And make sure to visit VanityFair.com for a preview of this month's cover story on Meryl Streep. For VF, I'm Michael Hogan. And for 60minutes.com, I'm Callie Carlin. Hope you'll join us again next month.